Hey everybody, Chris here from It's Mead Man, and I got a blah. Can't talk. Hey everybody, Chris here from It's Mead Made, and today I am going to show you how I paint a rock terrain. <laughs> So I printed this beast model from Sanix on my new E10 8K resin printer. And it has so much detail, and the base of this is so detailed, I cannot wait to paint it. And that's what we're going to be painting today, just the base of this model. Because I'm going to be going through a few different techniques. So before we get started, just to let you know where I'm at right now with the model. I've went ahead and cleaned up the model, and I've already given it a base coat of black. So I figured you didn't need to see me airbrushing this thing black. Not very entertaining. So that's where we're at, and let's go ahead, jump to the table, and get started. So I have this base where we're going to make this stone texture look as real as possible. And first, what I'm going to have to do is I am going to just quickly do the ring for the base. And what I'm going to do is use this Rub and Buff Antique Gold. So I'm going to get the whole thing that, and then I'm going to go in and actually get... Then I'm going to get these little brackets in this ring and paint those by hand, probably. If you're new to Rub and Buff and you don't know how to use it, I've actually made a video tutorial exactly just how you use it, and I'm going to be using those same principles that I did in that video. And I'll go ahead and put it right up here for you. So here we go. I think the biggest thing with Rub and Buff that I say every single time, a little bit goes a long way. So already, just like that, it brings a lot of character, but I'm going to go ahead and add some more detail to this. So I'm going to use this Folk Art Brushed Silver, and I am going to paint this ring around here this silver so I'm just gonna paint this by hand and I'm definitely wanting to take my time with this I do not want to rush it because then I'll get it on the antique gold part already okay so now I have this all silver the ring all the way around it now what I'm going to do is get these brackets and all I'm going to be using is just this apple barrel black. I just wanted a matte black. Now I have all of these brackets painted and now I have these bolts. So I'm just going to go over with the same silver I had and go ahead and just kind of lightly get all of these little bolts right here. Okay, so there we go. The base is done. Now this should go on here. And that has just kind of given it a little extra something. I really like it. So now we're going to paint this rock base. Now I am going to be using dry brush with a couple other little things along the way. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna be using is this wrought iron and I am going to basically get a just a dry brush, a rough dry brush all over this with a very large makeup brush or I'm going to call it my dry brush. I'm starting to use this new technique that I picked up from Artist Opus of using a texture board instead of paper towels. So I'm going to apply my paint directly to here and then I am just going to be getting it all over the edges of this brush to saturate it. And I'm turning my brush as I'm dragging it to try to get the paint, the excess paint off test it there we go okay so I am just going to I'm not going to be holding it down here I'm actually going to have it here to just kind of lightly dust it now this wrought iron is very close to black but we're just going to be building up our layers on it.
Okay, it's probably a little hard to tell, but there are some light, lighter highlights than the just the black. Now I'm going to break out this medium gray and put right beside it, and I'm going to start mixing them together to just get a lighter version of this wrought iron. And going to do the same thing. Just kind of going over this. All right, since there are so many little cracks right here and here, I'm going to switch to a smaller brush. I've actually gotten everything I really want on this top part right here with the colors we've used so far. But let's switch to a smaller one. So I'm gonna to switch to a size about like this and going to do the exact same thing with the same colors, mixing them together and using this textured area to be able to remove this and here we go just now i'm just going to do the same thing just getting in those smaller areas so the next thing is i want to get some different colored textures inside the cracks here like dirt so i'm going to go ahead and get a brown for this but we're not going to dry brush it we're going to treat it more of a kind of a wash. All right, so I have this real brown and it's a darker brown. So I'm going to go ahead and put just a little bit in my paint palette. And I'm going to add a lot more water than I typically would because I want this watered down a lot. And I'm going to go ahead and use this rougher kind of brush. And I'm going to mix this up. And this is more of like a glaze or than like a wash, I guess. Um, but this is super watery. You can see how watery it is. And now all I'm going to do is really just slosh this in a few different areas. And just kind of dab it in there. And it's going to start running in the cracks and things like that. And that is exactly what I want. Now I'm not going to do it everywhere, just a few random spots. And that's it. So now, so now I'm going to wash my brush and basically just clean it off a little bit and start wiping this stuff off the high layers and just kind of getting the brush any water left on the brush get it off then i'm going to take my little baby q-tip and just start dragging this across the top layers and this is really just kind of cleaning off those high surface areas and just letting it stay in. I'm not even really pressing down. I'm just dragging it. And that is going to get me all of that brown left in those cracks. And that's really what I want for some of this. So you can kind of see here that there is that brown in those different cracks and things like that. And it really just kind of creating like this muddied texture of, of those cracks. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and let this dry all the way. Because I do not want to move on to the next step with more of the dry brushing until this is all dry. Because the moisture from this can get into the bristles and it can, it just won't be good. So we're going to let it dry. Okay. Okay. So I don't know if you can see this, but now we have like this dirty looking cracks and that's exactly what we were wanting to do. So the next step we're going to do is go back to our dry brush and do the exact same thing we just did. Go back over some of the areas that maybe got a little too much brown on it. And I'm just going to hit those in those specific areas before we move on. And there we go. So now we're going to start with just this gray. I'm going to start just pulling that and getting that on my brush. And notice I have not cleaned my dry brush yet. I'm just using the same brush without dry cleaning it off. 
Okay, so test it out. And now I am just going to go everything, hit everything nice and lightly. And notice where I'm holding my brush. I'm just letting it drag across it. Because we're really just layering this paint one after another. And if you notice, all I'm doing for the big rock is I'm only going down because I want it to be darker in these areas. So all I'm doing is dragging it from the top down and letting those dark areas just be dark, just for to help with the shadows. And all of these cracks and things like that are really going to help accentuate that. Then on the top, I'm just going to town on it, just going everywhere. And one of the big things I think I should mention, if there is like a large crack like right here, okay, let's say that this is the crack, we want to go perpendicular to that crack because if we start painting it this way, our dry brush could potentially get in that crack and we could lose that shadow. So right here you see this big crack. I'm trying not to go this way with it. I want to go perpendicular. So I want to go like that to really hit those high spots. That way our brush drags across that valley and it does not go inside it. And that's the big thing when you're doing dry brushing. If you're having issues with your dry brush and it's not getting the same results, that could be a big factor in the way you're actually dragging it across. I'm dragging it down like this to really get these under shadows because if you look from up here, it's lighter. And if you look from down here, it's a little darker. Now, it the same thing applies to these cracks. Like you want to just go perpendicular to it. Now, when it comes to like these flatter areas, just going like this, it, that's going to be fine because if you're if you're brushing it lightly, it will not go into those cracks. But some of these bigger areas like this, it could absolutely go in there and I could lose that darkness. And you see here like this hole right here. I'm going against that hole so it's not going inside it. So I think I've got the medium gray highlights really nice on this now. So now what I'm going to do since this base does go to a beast, I want to start incorporating just a little bit of blue. So I'm going to use this silver marlin, and it's kind of a bluish gray. So I'm going to start mixing this together. And to begin with, it's going to be a little more gray, but I am brightening this up a lot. So... I got a lot on this and I can use the texture part to pull off all the excess paint here and test it and looks good. Now this time for when I get lighter, I'm going to start hitting it less because I really want to keep some of these darker areas. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to really hit some of these higher ridges because I'm really happy with how this ground part looks. And it's really going to accentuate these rocks even more if I start ignoring the base because I don't want the entire rock ground to have all of the exact same highlighting. So now with this, I am really just going to be hitting these bigger rocks and I'm going to start ignoring the ground because the ground has a good dark texture to it and these rocks are going to get brighter and brighter and it's really going to accentuate it. So you can see already, we're really starting to get some really cool ridges and highlights. Just remember to go perpendicular with it and then it'll really make that thing pop. And the same thing, I'm just moving downwards. Now some of these bigger rocks, because you kind of see how like these rocks just stand out like crazy. I'm going to do just a couple of these rocks right here. And very, very lightly. If you notice when I'm starting, I'm back here, but as my paint starts dissipating from my brush, I start moving up more and more to be able to have a little more force put to it. That way I can get all of the paint off of my dry brush. And I'm gonna get some of these edge rocks. 
That way we can kind of incorporate a little bit of the ground because some of them might be hitting, getting a little more light. But I still want to keep some of these darker areas. So there we go. So now I'm going to use this pale gray and it is so close to white. I mean, there might be five or six percent black in this, if that. So I need to be very, very careful because now we're just going to be doing very selected ridges to really just make this thing pop. So I'm going to get it on my brush, test it. Okay. That's good. Now I'm just going to be selecting the areas, like the tops of the edges and things like that, and just really, really lightly get these ridges even more accentuated. And another cool thing you can do is go the opposite way to really highlight some of the ridges that are nice and dark. So it'll catch a nice edge line on them, but just be very careful. You can really overdo this unless you're going for this really high contrast. And I'm kind of going in the middle. I have some really high contrast areas and some that are not. And that's really it for this part. And I think right here I'll also hit a little. And there we go. So there we go. We've got some really nice dark areas in there. And then we've got this rock that's got some nice gradations on it because it's, you know, lighter up here, darker on the bottom. And we've got some good edges. So the last thing I'm going to do is do some weathering pigments to just get a little more shading in here. Now, I actually made these weathering pigments out of past soft pastels. And if you miss that video, you can actually see it right up here. And I go through how I made these. So I'm going to take my rough kind of brush and just kind of stab it in here and start getting some of these pigments on the brush. And then I'm going to selectively just try to get some of these in different spots here. And I'm really focusing on the ground more than anything. And I'm just kind of stabbing it in there just to give some more shading, being very selective of where it's going. And this also is in some of the spots where I did the brown, but also it's in some other spots, like where I think there would be some mud or something like that. And then I kind of give it a shake to get any of that extra that is there. And... Just kind of brushing it in there. So you can kind of see it gives more of a dirty kind of look to it. And you can just brush this to kind of spread it out a little more and even rub your finger across it and then it will kind of wipe it off a little more. But the thing with the weathering pigments, it might have dulled some of those areas that you don't want to be that dulled, but you still wanted some of that in the cracks. You can go through and if I just add a little white to this, you can hit it again. So if I just hit this one more time, just to bring out some of that texture again, but it's still nice in those cracks. You got some really nice dirt So there we go So since this is a base and it's just rocky I want to give a little bit more flair to this thing So I'm gonna go ahead and add like a little dead grass tuft since it's kind of a desolate kind of area and I'm going to probably add maybe just one, one in here, maybe two, we'll see. So I'm just going to take this and cut this up and glue it into place. So the one thing about these tufts is they're always a little too big for me. So I always cut them in half and, and in pieces. And all I'm going to do is take my Gorilla Super Glue gel and first figure out where I want to place this thing. 
I always like to kind of place it in cracks and things like that. So looks like right there would be kind of cool. So just add some of my super glue onto this. And then kind of place it where I want it. Very subtle details. And since it's around this big rock, I might put another one on this side. Maybe I'll put the bigger one on that side. So maybe you're like right there. Yep. And there we go. So now it's just got a little bit of extra something to it. Now all I've got to do is glue this on here and we are set. When it comes to painting terrain, I feel like everybody has their own version and methodology of like the process of how they do it. But at the end of the day, I hope you were able to just pick a few nuggets out of this video and see maybe a new technique that you've never tried. So next I have to tackle this beast. <laughs> uh, that's a good pun. Uh, it wasn't intended, but now it is. That, that, that's... I'm gonna tackle this beast, yeah. So I'll be making another video of how I actually paint this guy. So until then, I'll see you in the next video. Have a good one.